We will now summarize and discuss some important points to keep in mind when using the mapper algorithm. We'll again use the example from extracting insights from the shape of complex data using topology, their introductory example of modeling the hand and converting it into a graph. So recall we take our data set, we can then use a filter function, so for example projection to the x-coordinate, to create a bunch of overlapping bins. Once we have those overlapping bins, we can cluster each individual bin, each cluster is represented by a vertex. So take a bin and cluster the bin and each bin is represented by a vertex. And then we connect two vertices by an edge if their clusters intersect. But note we made many, many choices. In order to know what are the best choices, it often helps to collaborate with someone who truly understands the data. It really helps to have a good understanding of the data. One of the choices we made was how to first off model the data set. So often one must clean the data set. There's a number of things one must do to have a nice data set to work with. We then chose a filter function. In this particular example, it was projection to the first coordinate, but one could have instead projected to the y coordinate. But if you project to the y coordinate, you aren't going to get the same result. It will not be as nice. Some standard filter functions would be to instead project to the principal component. L infinity centrality and norm are also some filter functions. One can use any function that where your image is the real line, and then as long as you use some function to the real line, one can still take overlapping intervals and then take the pre-image, whatever it happens to, whatever function you happen to have. One then has to choose your bins. Well, if you took a function to the real line, we can cover it with overlapping intervals, we could decide to use equal lengths, that's fairly standard, but even if we have, even if this interval is, is of the same length as this interval, we still need to know the length of the interval, as well as do we have a small overlap or do we have a large overlap between the intervals, so percent overlap. So there are choices there to be made. One could also, instead of projecting onto, so instead of having a function that just goes into the real line and covering the real line, one could use two different filter functions and project onto R2 using two different filter functions and then cover R2 the two-dimensional plane with overlapping squares or overlapping circles, however you want to cover, as long as when we take the pre-image, we get overlapping bins. So however we want to do it, we just want to have overlapping bins that completely cover our data set. So there's lots of different ways one could choose to have a function that simply goes onto the real line and take overlapping things there, or we could use two different filter functions, or we could do something completely different as long as our data set is covered by overlapping bins. That's what we're interested in, but there's lots of different ways of doing that. Once we have our overlapping bins, we now need to cluster the data set but there are different ways to cluster the data set. We could use k-means, we could use dbscan. There's lots of different ways of clustering, so we'd have to choose a way of clustering the data set. Once we have that, well, once we have our clusters, then we have our vertices. We have our overlapping bins, so we also have our edges. And so we now have our network. We now have the graph representing our data.
but we did make lots and lots of choices. A nice quote from that paper that we've been taking the examples from, the URL being down at the bottom of most slides, is we can think of Mapper like a camera. We can use different lens adjustments in other settings, so a different filter function will likely diff generate a different network, a different graph to represent it. So we can explore the data from a variety of different perspectives by using different filter functions, different clusterings, different overlapping, you know, choosing different lengths for our uh, bins and percentage of overlap. But when you have so many choices, there's always a possibility of false positives. One of my favorite XKCD cartoons is the green jelly bean cartoon. So in this cartoon, scientists first hypothesized that jelly beans cause acne. But they did the experiment and found no correlation, so there's likely no correlation between jelly beans and acne, thus likely a result that cannot be published. But maybe it's a certain color that causes it. So they check purple jelly beans, brown jelly beans, pink jelly beans, blue, teal, salmon, red, turquoise, magenta, yellow, gray, tan, cyan, or green. They found a link between green jelly beans and acne. But there's only a 95% confidence interval. So if you repeat experiments multiple times, even if you change conditions, one of these, if we do this enough times, one of these is almost certainly going to be a false positive. So false positives do occur oh, about 5% of the time when you're using a 95% confidence interval. And so you might get something you think you can publish, but in reality, it's just a false positive. So one has to be careful when one can make many, many choices that you're not just making lots of choices until you can get something that, pub that you can publish. No, you have to be a bit more careful and check to see, well, how robust are your choices? One of the things about Mapper is we could check different filter functions. Well, the different filter function probably is allowing us to explore the data from different perspectives. So maybe the different filter function is something where we would expect to get a different output. But in terms of using different clustering methods, different percent overlap, different lengths of our intervals, you know, how robust is your result to choosing different ways of covering your data. And if it's necessarily robust, well, then it's something that probably should be published. But if it is something where I just change my percent overlap by a little bit or change the length of my interval by a little bit and I get a completely different result, well, then maybe that in itself has meaning, but that should be explored. So when you do have many choices, do be careful about false positives and do check to see how robust your data is. But on the other hand, being able to have different ways of generating networks does allow you to, to explore the data from a variety of different perspectives. One other nice thing about the Mapper software is that it is coordinate free. It didn't depend upon the coordinate, whether you used polar coordinates or whatever coordinates. It only depended upon your filter function and how you encoded your filter function didn't matter. In particular, you can compare your data set derived from different platforms. If you take a look at this 2013 paper, they analyzed breast cancer data from two different platforms. And the original papers that generated the data, data, the second paper said, we can't really compare our methods to the first data because we use very different methods. But the mapper did actually allow them to compare the two and they got very similar results. So take a look at that 2013 paper to see that it really does let you compare data derived from different platforms, and that is a very nice thing to be able to do.
Mapper is also invariant to small deformations. That makes it less sensitive to noise. Remember our data set being a hand. Well, if I move this thumb a little bit, we're got basically going to get basically the same shape. We can, you know, twiddle our fingers a little bit. If I do clench it into a fist, I will get something different. So if I make a major change, clenching into a fist, I'll expect something different. But moving my fingers a little bit, that's not going to make a major change. I'm going to get the same graph. The third thing is we did get a compressed representation. We went from thousands of data points down to a graph with only 13 vertices and 12 edges, so much simpler representation. So the mapper software does allow you to represent your data or to get a representation of your data that's much simpler than your original data. And it can give you a nice way of visualizing your data with far fewer vertices, so in, with a much simpler representation. For more on this and to take a look at mapper applied to analyzing how basketball players play, uh, politics, as well as breast cancer data, feel free to take a further look at this paper here.